Hey, how you all doing? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to talk about how to put out a fire in Unity. So, we'll have a simulated fire and we're going to have a simulated extinguishing mechanism and we're going to put out the fire. We're going to be using free assets throughout this project so you don't have to worry about buying anything and these fires that you see here, this smoke that you see here is all free by Unity. We are going to be using scripting to put out these fires but it's not a big deal if you don't know how to code. You will be able to learn things as we go along. I'm going to take you through the process step by step and then the code will be available through my GitHub. I'm also going to walk you guys through to how to set up these particle systems so that they look good in our scene. Today we're going to take advantage of a free asset called the Unity Particle Pack and it's going to include all of the steam, the smoke, and the fire that we're going to use in this whole tutorial. So let's go ahead and take a look at that download page and I'll tell you about some things that you need to worry about or, or think about when you download and import that package. I posted a link to this pack in the description so make sure that you check it out and add that to your assets. Once you've added it to your assets you'll have it available to you through the package manager manager once you get into the Unity Editor. So when you're in the Unity Editor, go ahead and find this pack, download it, and then import it into your project. Now, it is super important that if you're importing this into a previous project, that is a project that you're working on, as opposed to a brand new project, that you unclick the project settings in the import folder because it will override your current project's project settings. The only reason that this has bad reviews on the Unity Asset Store is because people have overridden their previous project settings. So make sure that if you don't want to do that, that you unclick the project settings part of this package as you import it. Now we're gonna go into our project folder. We're gonna find the effect examples folder from our Unity particle pack, and we're gonna go into the fire and explosion effects folder, then the prefabs folder. Now the last thing in there should be the wildfire. You're gonna grab that and drop it into your scene so that we see a nice little fire blazing in the middle of wherever you drop it. Now let's click on that wildfire, either in the hierarchy or directly in the scene view, and we're gonna take a look at how we're gonna modify this fire so that as it's raging, it gets big or to a maximum value, and then as we extinguish it, it gets smaller and smaller as it's extinguished completely. You'll notice that the fire uses the large flame O2 material from the fire and explosion effects materials folder. This is a sprite sheet. It uses a bunch of different flame sprites and blends between them. So if we modify the scale of our transform component of the fire, all it's gonna do is rescale those flame sprites. That's not a big deal, but when we get to scale of zero, it's not going to completely eliminate those sprites as we might expect. In spite of that, the transform scale would be a cool way to eliminate the use of various prefabs for all of your different fires. So you don't have to worry about setting up a different fire every time that you wanna create a fire. You can just change the scale of this one fire and then you'd be able to make different sized fires. So I made a little mistake here because you can't actually just control the fire through the scale. You can completely eliminate the fire through the scale if you also scale down the wildfires, child elements, embers, and fire. So that's another strategy that you guys could use as opposed to the one that I'm going to present to you in just a moment. So you've seen how to change this particle system by using the transform scale component. What we want to do is really use the particle system component and specifically the emission module of the particle system. So as you see here, we have a bunch of base values for the particle system and we also have the ability to change the way that it is emitted. We have the ability to change the shape, etc. We're going to go into that emission module. We're going to open that drop down up and we're going to see the three different ways that we can modify this. We can modify the rate over time, rate over distance, and the bursts which fire from the particle system. We don't need to worry about bursts and we really don't need to worry about rate over distance. We could set that to zero. It doesn't really matter. Rate over time is what we're going to be using and we're going to be using the constant rate over time and we're going to adjust that as our fire becomes more intense or as we extinguish it. For now we're going to leave that rate over time at 5. That's a good constant and any higher value really just creates overlapping flames which doesn't make for a better looking fire, it just makes for worse performance. What you can do to change the fire so that it looks like it's burning faster is go into that main particle system and change the start lifetime to a lower value. That'll increase the transitions between the sprites on the sprite sheet for the flames. You can also change the size. Again, that kind of increases the overlap of the sprites. Now, if you do want to change that rate over time, I would suggest that you also increase the size of the shape. 
So this is using a hemisphere shape with a radius of one. I would increase the radius of that if you're going to increase the rate over time at which the particles are emitted. Now we're gonna add some smoke to this fire before we move on, and then we'll go into how to extinguish it. The free unity particle pack that we imported earlier is going to have its own smoke and steam effect. We're going to want both a smoke and a steam effect. Smoke for the fire and then steam for the water once it hits the fire. So we're going to go back into our effect examples folder, the smoke and steam effects subfolder and the prefabs folder. We'll pull in steam and we will pull in smoke effect. The steam we can leave it on its own. The smoke, we're going to put smoke on each and every one of our fires, so we can go ahead and make that part of the wildfire prefab. First, you're going to want to put the smoke under the wildfire, make it a child of the wildfire, and then zero out its position. And then we can click on overrides, and we can apply all, so that all of the changes that we've made will apply to the wildfire prefab. Now we're going to change this smoke so it looks better with our fire. So I'm going to go ahead and the first thing I'm going to do is zero out or reset the transform on there. I want this fire to, I mean I want the smoke to come up obviously. Uh, the shape is where I can change the rotation of the shape. So I'm going to go ahead and change the rotation on the X to 270 and that will make the smoke go straight up. And I'm going to increase the size of this cone that you see here. I'm going to use this, I'm going to click on this icon here, and that'll allow me to use the gizmo edit mode. So I can increase the base of the emission and the height and the eventual uh, opening of the of where the particles are going to go. I, want, I might want to have more particles emitted, so let's increase the rate over time to 50 and see what that does. It looks pretty, well, it's pretty dense smoke. Let's see what happens if we increase the shape. It's looking quite a bit better. I want to also increase this the life of these particles. So let's try 8 instead of 5 and see how that looks. It's looking pretty good. That's not bad. Now on your wildfire itself, Make sure you click on the overrides drop down and then click the apply all so that we all those changes that we've made apply to all of your fires in the scene and in your prefabs. So what we're going to want to do now is create a prefab with this. So I'm going to right click on our water leak object here in the scene. I'm going to unpack the prefab completely. Then I'm going to click on the small splash child and delete that. I'm going to rename this to water hose so that it's a little bit more aptly named and then in my prefabs folder so i have my own prefabs folder i'm going to just drop that in there so that whenever i want to grab a fire hose i can pull that out or if i accidentally delete it in the scene then i have that in my prefabs folder and i don't have to worry about making all this again this video is running long so i'm going to cut it off here i just got a little bit sick so i'm sorry about that guys and the next part we're going to go into the code and how we're going to implement and finish this project. I leave you with this photo so that you can see how the fire works. You can probably gather from this class and from the way that we've done the emission modules in the setup for this project that we're going to be basing our emission rate on the current intensity of the fire. Hopefully from this you can gather that we're going to have a way to, if you stop watering the fire, it will regenerate. It's something similar to Call of Duty where if someone stops shooting you, you regenerate your health if you're not already dead. So this type of system is useful not only for fires but for other systems like your combat systems as well. So if you're not subscribed and you want to know when the next video is coming out, subscribe and ring the bell because that will notify you as to when the next video comes out. Thank you guys for watching. If you have any comments or criticisms, any issues or questions, let me know in the comments. If you like the video, like it. If you dislike it, dislike it because I still get that feedback and that helps me out with the content that I create. Thank you guys. See you next time.